Embarrassing moments in the history of the NHL. The single axle. No, but it doesn't matter. He's even <laughs> having some fun with it. That's his first goal for Pajarvi since December the 1st. Whether it's Yuri Tlusty, who tarnished his reputation when his nude and candid photos with male friends leaked on Facebook, or it's a crucial moment for Edmonton's Steve Smith, who made a costly mistake by mistakenly scoring a goal against his team in 1986. Now this is really embarrassing. But that's not just it. There are hundreds of these moments in NHL history. And in this video, we are going to reveal the top of these embarrassing moments. Let's go! Number 1. Patrick Kane is arrested and 20 Cent is born. Patrick Kane of the Chicago Blackhawks and his cousin James were arrested and charged with second-degree robbery, fourth-degree criminal mischief, and theft of services in August 2009. Well, they allegedly punched a Buffalo cab driver because he didn't have 20 cents to give them change from their $15 for a $14.80 fare. The felony robbery accusation was dismissed, and Kane pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct on August 27th, a non-criminal offense. The aftermath was huge for Kane, who won the Calder Trophy in 2007-2008. His image was tarnished at the same time that it first appeared on the cover of a video game, and the Blackhawks were a budding cup contender. The townsfolk mocked him in Buffalo by scattering dimes across his family's front lawn. Kane was obliged to apologize for the incident at the beginning of the U.S. Olympic orientation camp. Hockey fans derided him for his transgression, but some believed he contributed to a young athletes out of control trend in professional sports. But ultimately, it gave him the nickname of 20 Cent and spawned a cottage industry of amusing t-shirts. Special recognition for the Canadian's rookie purse robber. Someone else's purse is not like his. Takes away by Nash, Kreider after it. Kreider moves in, was checked by Ballard. Number two, Steve Smith's own goal. This is the NHL's Bucknerian moment. At 519 in the third period of Game 7 of the 1986 divisional playoffs against the persistent Flames, the Edmonton Oilers rookie defenseman banked a puck off goalkeeper Grant Fuhr's left knee and into the net while attempting to clear the zone from behind his goal line. The final score, Calgary 3, Oilers 2. Smith collapsed on the ice thereafter, devastated. Edmonton had more than 14 minutes to tie the game and force overtime, but Flames goalie Mike Vernon stopped them. The error became the defining event of Smith's career, but he, like Buckner, was a first-rate player, a member of Canada's 1991 Canada Cup champions, and a dependable defenseman for Edmonton and later the Blackhawks. The error, like Buckner's, was due to the context rather than the commission. The Oilers, who had won the previous two Stanley Cups, were aiming for their third in a row. They would have been heavy favorites in the finals against the rookie-laden Montreal Canadiens, who would eventually defeat the Flames in five games. Edmonton would win the 1987 and 88 Cups, with Smith's own goal costing the Oilers a chance at five straight, a feat that would have tied the Canadiens' 1956-60 juggernaut. Five consecutive Cups would have changed the history of those legendary Edmonton teams, raising them to hockey's pantheon the 1980s Oilers could have been recognized as the game's most magnificent dynasty rather than just the most entertaining. Number 3. The Worst Hockey Fight of All Time With all due respect to Washington Capitals winger Alex Semin and his Mark Stahl-shaped bongos, we're here to commemorate an even more epically horrible moment in puck pugilism. On April 6, 2006, Aaron Downey of the Montreal Canadiens and Brad Norton of the Ottawa Senators fought. No, truly, that is all they did. Downey and Norton were both given 10-minute misconducts for wasting everyone's time. The punch snobs at HockeyFights.com do not even include this incident on Downey's website, which was an insult to fighting. Number 4. Tommy Salo becomes a hero in Belarus In the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, Swedish goaltender Tommy Salo's head helped Belarus advance to the bronze medal game, one of the all-time Olympic bloopers. From the Associated Press, the shot couldn't have gone in, yet it did. Sweden couldn't have lost, but it did. And the kind of upset that couldn't possibly happen with NHL players suddenly dominating the Olympics has occurred. 
Vladimir Kopat scored on a 70-foot shot that deflected crazily off goalie Tommy Salo's head with only 2.24 left in the hockey quarterfinals, and Belarus pulled off one of the greatest upsets in Olympic history by defeating Sweden 4-3. Ty Conklin's blunder in Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Finals in 2006 is deplorable, but it doesn't top this. Number 5. When Party Photos Are Taken Out of Context The internet is a perilous place for candid photographs, especially when the photographs can be used to advance an agenda. In 2008, members of the Philadelphia Flyers were seen crashing a Temple University fraternity party. Later, further candid images of the Flyers hanging out with porn star Gina Lynn emerged they conspire to cement the locker room's party boy's reputation for poor play, which GM Paul Holmgren had to confront in the 2009 offseason and that remained in place during the Flyers' 2009-10 season problems. In 2008, the Montreal Canadiens faced controversy after images of players drinking and in the case of goalie Carey Price, smoking, were circulated on the internet. Fans online assumed that the majority of these photographs were taken over the offseason while traditional media used them to explain why the Habs' centennial season had failed. Finally, Alex Ovechkin's pre-stardom photographs of him carousing with other Russian players, such as Andrei Markov, are amusing. Less amusing is when they were used as evidence in some strange email scan that attempted to link the two with a receipt for an expensive night at a strip club. It's complete rubbish, but we still get emails about it every couple of weeks. Number six, being too hot for the internet. You got a beautiful face. Thanks, yeah. You should be on camera every day. Yeah. The rise of social media has transformed the lives of both fans and players. There were a few reminders to NHL players that provocative photography is never safe on the internet. Granted, the eye-popping sight of Columbus Blue Jackets defenseman Mike Commodore wearing nothing but black boxer underwear and covering himself in $100 bills from a Super Bowl pool was more amusing than dangerous. However, the photo was uploaded on a friend of Commodore's profile, highlighting the hazards of Facebook, and Commodore was forced to respond to the internet meme since some mistook the shot for criticizing the millions he had earned as a free agent with Columbus. Yuri Tlusti of the Toronto Maple Leafs had a much more unpleasant situation. At first, candid images of him in suggestive stances with male acquaintances had him battling accusations about his sexuality. Tlusti then shared a cell phone selfie on Facebook with a female acquaintance, showing him fully naked in front of a mirror. Lawyers discovered the photographs and the Leafs defended the young athlete, but his name is now associated with the scandalous images. Overall, an inexperienced professional saw Tlusti's mistakes as youthful infractions. Although, ironically in this case, Damian Cox of the Toronto Star argued Tlusti tarnished the team's famous emblem and disgraced what was once a Canadian institution. We believe his editors removed the words about locking the unclean in the gallows and stoning them to death. Number 7. NHLers Who Gamble With Their Reputations well, the question is, what were the chances that Operation Slapshot would make this list? The Sting operation, coordinated by New Jersey State Police, discovered a countrywide gambling network and resulted in charges against then-Phoenix Coyotes assistant coach Rick Tockett after he was named head coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Tockett eventually agreed to a plea deal that resulted in two years of probation. His leave of absence and a three-month suspension from the NHL also kept him out of hockey for nearly two years. Janet Jones, the wife of Tockett's buddy and then Coyotes coach Wayne Gretzky, was also implicated in the probe, despite not being charged with a crime. She was accused, however, of betting $75,000 on the Super Bowl and $5,000 on the coin toss alone, prompting public derision and Gretzky's denial of any involvement in the gambling ring. According to Sports Illustrated, Yager reached an agreement with the Carib Sports website in 2000 to repay a $450,000 wagering obligation. In both cases, no one was charged with wagering on hockey. That's it for today's video. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel. Also, hit the bell icon for the latest updates. Until next time!